This lecture is about the objective assessment of a stroke patient. In objective examination, we always start from the inspection. In inspection, we check the general symmetry, whether any obvious deformity or wasting is visible or not. If one side has a marked wasting or atrophy, then always check the other side, whether it's normal or not. It, if one side has a marked wasting and atrophy, it means that it may have the upper motor neuron lesion. If patient is lying supine and sudden tremor starts in the hand, it may give possibility that they may have the Parkinson disease. After the inspection, we go for the sensory examination. If it's a stroke patient, so for the stroke patient, we do not check the dermatomal sensation. We always check cortical sensation. Dermatomal sensation has its own pattern. If uh, there's a Parkinson patient or another any SLE or any other patient, we go for the dermatomal pattern. But in the stroke patient, we always check for the cortical sensation. So how to check? Cortical sensation is to the soft cotton. Take a soft cotton and touch the patient and ask patient to tell where he feel that touch plus give the verbal command at the same time. So while touching with the soft cotton, start from the upper limb and then move to the lower limb. Most sensitive part for the touch is the sternum. So when we do the sensory examination, we can check the sensation at the sternum also. Next is a muscle strength. So muscle strength first begins with the upper limb, then move to the lower limb. In muscle strength, we cover the shoulder, elbow, wrist, fingers, then moving to the lower limb, hip, knee, ankle. But for example, let's start from the shoulder. So if we perform the shoulder flexion, so it is performed by the pex major. So while you ask the patient to perform the shoulder flexion, at the same time, give the resistance. So in this way, we check the muscle strength. So while checking the muscle strength, it is a, there is a scale in which we grade each point. So there is a scale which is known as a muscle strength grading. Like if there is no contraction, it means there is a zero. If there is a flicking movement present, we mark as a one on the scale. And if there is active movement without the gravity, we mark as 2 on the scale and if there is active movement against the gravity, we mark as 3. If there is active movement against the resistance, that is known as 4 and if there is no abnormality, all there is a normal strength, we mark is 5. Like for example, if you just touch the patient, and patient shows sudden resistance, it may give possibility that it may have some spasticity. Then you check for the shoulder extension, then move to the elbow flexors, extensors, adductors, adductor, and for the each muscle, check the strength. Then we move to the active movement. Active movement will be performed by the patient in the upper limb as well as the lower limb. So, when we check the active movement, always go first for the serratus interior muscle. What is the function of a serratus interior is to do the protraction of a shoulder. So what happened in the stroke patient is that within one to two days, there will be a flicking movement starts with the serratus interior muscle. So always start from the serratus interior of the affected side than to comparison with the normal side. Starting from a serratus interior, for example, you ask the patient to take the finger towards the ceiling. Patient is, uh, patient is in supine position and ask the patient to take the finger towards the ceiling. First check the isolated movement that a patient can perform actively that can a patient perform all the movements isolatedly? Just tell the patient to take the hands towards the ceiling and check whether the movement is normal or not. If there is no isolated movement present, stop the examination there. Then work on that movement. So here you will begin the MRP technique. 
mortal relearning program starts at this stage. If any movement is not isolated, stop the examination and just go for the MRP. If isolated movement is present, then go for the synergy. Like check, synergy is present or not. So what is synergy? Like for example, you ask the patient to do the protraction. But instead of just doing the shoulder protraction, what patient do that he perform elbow flexion, then he begin to protect the shoulder. So what happened is there that there is a synergy present. The patient reflects the elbow and will again try to lift the shoulder. There may be contractures present at the elbow, so the patient is compensating it. So stop the examination and just try to release that contracture. If there are no contractures, only synergy due to the brain problem, then give command to keep the elbow straight, hold from that side and perform the protraction at the shoulder. First perform in the upper limb and then go for the lower limb. In upper limb, shoulder, elbow and the wrist and fingers, then go for the hip, knee and the ankle in the lower limb. Again, after shoulder moving towards the elbow, ask patient to touch the dorsum of the hand on the forehead, in which you will check the bicep movements then go for the triceps and the so on. Next is the passive movement. What passive movement tell us about is that there is rigidity or spasticity. So what's the difference between the rigidity and spasticity is that rigidity is throughout the range. Like from start of motion, you will get the rigidity and it will continue throughout the range. While Spasticity is velocity dependent. For spasticity, we, uh, we have a scale through which we can check is modified as well as scales of spasticity. There are two scales. One is as well as scale of spasticity while other is modified. In this, I have discussed modified as well as scale which have five points. Like if there is no increase in a muscle tone, if you resist a movement and ask the patient to flex the elbow, a patient complete the movement and there is no increase in a muscle tone. You get same and a good resistance throughout the range. That is the normal resistance. So as sure scale, it is score as zero. But if there is a slight increase in a muscle tone, catch or a minimum resistance at the end range, like you feel some spasm type of at the end of the range, it will be scored as a 1. If there is a slight increase in a muscle resistance throughout the range less than the half, like before reaching the mid of the range, you feel some resistance, it is marked as a 1 plus on the modifier actual scale. If there is a moderate increase in a muscle tone throughout the range of motion and a passive range of motion is easy, it is Consider as a 2 on a scale and if there is a considerable increase in a muscle tone throughout the range of motion and the passive range of motion is difficult, it will consider as a 3 and there is a marked increase in a muscle tone, affected part is a rigid, that there is no movement at all. There may be a contractus present which leads to a totally rigid of that extremity, so it will be marked as or on an actual scale. Next are the reflexes. So in objective examination, you go for the you check for the reflexes. There will be a bicep, tricep, bicep is C5, C6, tricep, C7, C8 extension, brachioradialis. Next is the knee, L3, L4, and an ankle, S1 and S2. There may be a reflexia, there may be a normal reflex, or there may be a hyper reflexia. So you have to check whether reflex are normal or the reflex are exaggerated. So there are different gears. How you grade them is zero. If there is no reflex present, it may be a zero. If there is a hypoactive, if there is a hyper reflexia, you marked as one. If there are normal reflexes, they are marked as two, and they are hyperactive. 
without the clonus. If there are hyperreflexia without the clonus, means there is no clonus present, there is no any involuntary muscle contractions, or there is no any shaking movement, only the exaggerated response. Or if there is hyperactive with the clonus, so it's marked as four on the four on the reflexes scale.